we have Claudio and João. Claudio is a machine learning engineer, and João is a data scientist who is now finishing his master's degree in political science, and they are both going to present us the Ruas do Gênero, visualizing gender representation in the toponymy of Porto. Yes. Hi everyone, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Claudio and this is João, and today we will be talking to you about our data-driven approach into visualizing the gender toponymy in the city of Porto. Uh, but before we dive into the real content of the presentation, as locals ourselves, we'd like to welcome you to the city of Porto. I'm sure that a lot of you guys have traveled a long way to be here, so we'd like to give you a mini crash course on, <laughs> on what Porto is known about. So hopefully you've been able to do some sightseeing already, and if you have traveled along the, the river, I'm sure that you wondered why so many bridges. So yes, Porto is known for all of the six bridges that we have across the river, and apparently we are probably going to build a seventh one this year, so <laughs> we are also known for the for our food. Uh, Portugal is a, uh, like we have a lot of delicacies throughout the whole country. Uh, in Porto, I recommend you to try the Francesinha. Uh, I'm sure that you'll find a lot of cafes around downtown to to try one. And finally, as Portuguese as it can get, we are obsessed with with football. So. But the city, a city is much more than uh, its touristic landmarks. It's also made up of choices, and John will talk to you about these choices. Yes, uh, but first I want to talk to you about um, how this project came to be and uh, what was our inspiration. It all started um, with a play called Todos os dias me sujo de coisas eternas, or Every day I get, I get dirty by, uh, it, with eternal things by a Portuguese actress called Sara Barros Leitão. And uh, in this play, uh, Sara um, makes the audience uh, travel, um, uh, travel through the stories uh, of the people, of, of the women that um, gave their names to uh, streets and places um, in, this, in this city. Some of those stories are well known, some others have been, have been forgotten by the, by the past of time. And uh, here you have uh, a picture of, uh, of Sara uh, telling the story of Rosa Mota. Rosa Mota uh, was the first, the first Portuguese uh, woman to receive a gold medal in the Olympic Games in Mar uh, Marathon in 1988. And uh, it, it's also uh, the name, the original name of the venue where we are right now, uh, now uh, foreshadowed by a, by a new commercial name for a uh, alcoholic drink, but that's another story. <laughs> um, yeah, so let's go to the data. Um, there are more than 1,000 streets in Port, and only 4% of them are named after, after women. Here is Port, you see the river, the bridges, uh, the sea, and these are all of the streets, and we are there. And um, now you can see in green are the streets named after men, uh, in purple named the streets named after women, and in grey the streets that uh, are not named after, after people. As you can see, uh, the streets named after women are not only few, they are also, most of them, uh, short, and most of them not in the centre, so they are, they, they are less important uh, streets. Um, we wanted also to find a way to visualize not only uh, to visualize the importance of the streets. So we piled up um, the streets. Uh, and on the left, you have the streets named after men. On the right, you have the streets named after women. And the height, the height is the is the, um, represents the the um, the extension of each of each street. So on the left, the biggest street named after 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 men is Avenida Fernando Magalhães with, with 3.8 kilometers. On the right, you have Rua de Santa Catarina, 1.4. Probably you know that street already. is is a very important street, a very commercial one. And, but it's hard to, to, uh, to visualize this underrepresentation in, in only one slide, so you have to, we have to apply here uh, a transformation. So streets named after women have in total 19 kilometers, and now get ready. 
Yeah, the streets named after men are 14 times bigger in total than streets named after women with 237 uh, kilometers. Uh, we also wanted to, um, to find a way to, to, to know uh, which, uh, who are these, uh, these women, and we, um, we did some research on their, their professions. So you can, as you can see, half of them are saints, then you have some writers, some artists, some monarchs, three teachers, one engineer, one scientist, and one landlord. So as you can see, they are not only few, but half of them, they, they don't really celebrate uh, the lives of real, of real women. They are, um, they are religious figures, they are sim symbols of, of adoration. Uh, yeah, so now to the methodology. Uh, so, we started off the project by collecting data from OpenStreetMaps. We basically downloaded the CSV file with uh, all of the information on the geometry of the streets in Porto, like the municipality. Um, our, our initial methodology was to classify the streets by whether they were named after a woman or a man, and we used uh, natural language processing algorithms to basically uh, do the process automatically. But in the end, we had to do some manual fixes because we saw that the algorithm wasn't 100% uh, uh, correct. So, but for the most part, it was used, uh, we used NLP to classify the, the streets. Um, we then uh, used Python and GeoPandas to do some data science analysis on the data collected from OpenStreetMaps. Uh, this analysis, for example, was what helped us do the, the stack of the distances of the streets, so we were able to sum the, the, the lengths of, of the streets named after men and women, and then we created our own data set. So this is an example of an entry on our data set for the, the Rua de Santa Catarina. Um, we have the geometry of the street, which is a multi-line string in GeoPandas, and then we have a few properties. We have the name of that street, we have the gender, if it's named after a woman or man or just a concept, which where we use like NA. Uh, we also have the profession, so this was a very manual labor. We basically had to research and scour the whole internet to be sure, make sure that we were telling the, we were looking for the right person. And in a few cases where we couldn't find information online, we had to do so. We had to do that on site. So. We, through friends and through knowing some people that lived in that street, we were able to find uh, the true story of the person that was, uh, that woman that was named after that street. No, uh, the other way. <laughs> uh, finally, in the, in the front end, we are using Mapbox to do the map visualization. So that geo-json that I showed you on the previous slide, we are feeding it into uh, Mapbox. We have, so for example, uh, we have the, uh, the women layer, we have the men layer, and we have the NA layer, and that, uh, with scroll trigger, we are able to automatically, when, when you are scrolling through the website, we are, we, we are able to automatically turn on and turn off the few layers, and also the 3D animation on the, on the map. Um, the stacks, so the, the, uh, the distance, the length stacks were we done using D3, and we also did some animation that transforms the stack into the final uh, profession the, that was that John talked to you before. Yeah. So uh, now to, to the design questions, to the design questions that you had to design, design decisions that you had to make. Um, one one question that uh, gets asked a lot is um, why did you choose to use that colors to represent genders? So in one, in one hand, we wanted to avoid as much as possible the stereotypical pink and blue. Um, but on the other hand, uh, we understand that by having colors that are um, culturally associated with and are stereotypical of gender, it will be uh, far easier to, 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 um, for the charts to be readable and understandable quickly. So we had to decide on what to do. So we came across this very interesting a uh, blog post in Data Wrapper um, that th basically does a survey on how different um, news uh, newsrooms are, are are using colors to represent genders. Um, the, the, there's a, everyone is doing it differently, but I, we really uh, liked the the um, uh, the solution that the, telegra the telegraph is using. That is. 
um, using the colors of uh, green and purple. Why green and purple? Because those were the colors that the suffragette, the, the, the movement for, women, for the women's right to vote, used back in, back in the previous century. So uh, after that, the purple became the, the, the most commonly associated color with the feminist movement, so that's why we decided to use the purple for women and the green for men. Um, we, we wanted to talk a bit about, uh, about some of these women, who, who, who are they? We did the, prof we did the profession classification, but, some of, but it's impossible to, to summarize their lives in one cat category. So we wanted to bring at least two, two, two stories, the stories of Virginia Moura and Maria Lemus, they were both they were both um, anti-fascist militants. They were like they were two of the first um, uh, feminists in the in the in the context of the Portuguese feminist movement in the 20th century. They were both jailed and they were both arrested several times. Virginia Moore was arrested 16 times. Um, Maria, the, the picture of Maria Lemas is actually the picture that uh, she took when she went to prison, one of the first times. Um, but uh, we wanted to, to recognize their lives and to talk a bit about them and to recognize that without them probably we wouldn't be here talking freely about, uh, about, uh, about all this. Now we, we also wanted to talk a bit about why uh, talking about topo toponymy matters. Um, Talking about toponymy is not only talking about the past, it's talking about decisions that were made, some of them in the past, some of them are, are being made right now, and they are important to, to, to create the city that, that, that we want. Uh, I, want you to, to talk you, I want to talk to you about the story of, uh, of Gisberta Salles. She was uh, 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 she's very known for the Portuguese audience, probably. Uh, she was um, a trans woman, a Brazilian trans woman that was killed, that was murdered uh, in Porto in an abandoned building where she lived in 2006, and it sparked a very big debate in the in the country about the lack of rights of the LGBTQ plus community and. Um, and the, all the 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 the, the, the fears that that, um, that the trans community and the LGBTQ plus community lived every day, and um, uh, there's there has been a debate in in Porto about about uh, related with toponymy, toponymy and related with, with her story because the LGBTQ plus community, uh, community wanted to movement wanted to 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 have a name in the city to have a street in the city named after her and it and it sparkled a huge debate some of them some uh, it it was not um, unanimous some people think that uh, she didn't do anything for the city so we shouldn't have uh, a street named after her so it sparked a big debate but it's just an example to tell you how looking back at toponymy and thinking about representation matters today um, um yeah. so the fact the um the public debate on gender toponymy is very much important and one that we should continue having. And the fact that uh, a few media outlets, both here in Portugal, also in Brazil, uh, picked up on that story, uh, I think just proves our point that we should, uh, we should have this conversation. Yeah, so I want to end with this, with this idea that toponymy is not a detail, it is made up of choices that reinforce narratives. Uh, when, you, when we walk through a street, sometimes, most of the times we don't think even about the names, but uh, we hear those names every time. So it's important to question to, and to, to think critically about them, think about why, why, are, are they, why do, we, do we hear those names and why not others. And, um, and uh, that's something that uh, uh, with this project we wanted to contribute to. We wanted to contribute to this to this debate and to make people think a bit about about the things. So when you leave this arena and you go uh, to the city and try to explore it, try to look at the at the um, names of the streets and try to I don't know uh, think a bit more differently uh, about about this stuff that is really important. Thank you and uh, visit our website hojgener.pt and. Uh, uh, we reach us out if when you see us somewhere. <laughs> Thank you.
This is actually a very important discussion that we have almost every day in Portugal, especially <laughs> as a young woman. So thank you very much for bringing this topic. Um, just so you know, we won't have a pause now. Sorry for that. We will just have all the recording, uh, all the pre-recording, no, all the lightning talks, sorry. Uh, and then we have the break after, so we will have some time for some questions. Not a lot. There's one there, so... Oh, um, hi, my name is Lvov. Thank you so much for your work. Um, did I get it right that you had to mark like 237 streets manually? Um, the, the, the professions. Yeah. All the professions. Yes, we did that uh, research work. Some of them was already done by, by Sara in the play that I, that I told you about, but uh, we had to do that uh, research mostly manual because there's no there's no, the information is, uh, is in, it comes from multiple fonts, from, from multiple sources, so uh, yeah, we had to do that research work. Yeah, that's a huge work. Um, I was just wondering if you have like similar um, breakdown for men, like by profession, so uh, can we say that uh, most of streets which are named um, after men are also named by saints or by Barriers, but no. Like that. um, that's also another question that gets asked a lot. Um, because the classification was mostly manual, it will be humanly impossible to do that for men. <laughs> but we can have a general feeling about the data. If, if, we, if we filter by uh, saint in the beginning of the name, we can, we can have some we ha can have a big picture of, of, of that, and I can assure you that is not even 20%. Um, it's, a, it's a general number, I don't have an exact number because that will be very hard to, to achieve, but um, yeah, it's much less. Uh. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just there. Hi, thank you so much for the great work. Um, I'm Ali, I work with uh, Syria related journalists. My question is like, maybe you, you mentioned in one of the slides, but it was in Portuguese, I'm not sure if that was it, but my question is like, did you manage to measure the impact of your project on the public debate in Porto or like other areas in Portugal? Did you have any impact in the public debate? Or in other words, like, are you aiming to provoke public debate on naming the streets in particular or in, in general regarding gender equality? Yeah, I think, um this project started, it's, it, it didn't start because we wanted to, to do a new data visualization project. We wanted to uh, do a project about this problem and we thought that using data visualization would be the best way to tell this story. And, uh, or one, of, one, of, one great way to tell this story. Um, and uh, I think uh, the, the goal was achieved because uh, we get a lot of people to talk about this uh, we were able not only on social media, but also on uh, news outlets, some more local, some more national, um, to get this, this topic to, to, to be, be taught in a way that is more informed, because these numbers uh, were not there in the debate, there were some estimations, but, and having the visualization really helps create a, an impact. It's more than just presenting a number. Um, we also had some... Um, we, we, for example, Claudio was in Leiria, which is a, a city in the center of Portugal, where the, their, their local government uh, started uh, gathering this data, and they invited us because they said that one of the things that uh, that um, uh, made made them um, made the local government interested in this topic was our project. So when we hear that, of course, we feel very happy about it, and we think that our goal was achieved. But it's a goal that. Nothing has changed, you know? So it's good that people are talking about this, it's good that there are more people informed about this topic, but there's still plenty to be done and a lot of debate that has to be done in the future. I can add a bit more on this about Lydia. So basically, uh, we were at an open debate with the, um, with the people of Lydia and some of the people from also the, gov the local government. And basically they opened a public um, petition where people would submit names of women that uh, they thought could be 
uh, should be named in a in a street in Lydia. And I, I I don't remember the exact number, but they received a lot of a lot of names. Uh, and yeah, I think they're in the future within uh, they're going to apply that those names that they received in the in the municipality. So it's nice to to hear, and especially that the project has helped us, even if it is like a small part in in this change. Yeah. Are you aware of any other um, similar projects here in Portugal? Yes, uh, there's one project uh, about Lisbon and the ratios are not very different. And uh, after doing the project, we get to know some other projects in other cities. Well, we knew one before uh, about Madrid. I think there's one in, 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 in um, we also Barcelona too. And there's the a project. One. Yeah, there's yeah. a project called mappingdiversity.eu that's also really interesting. They, gathering, they are gathering uh, data about, uh, I think they have 30 cities on yeah. their website, and it's really, in really interesting. Too. And how is the data? Is it? It's very similar, it's mostly. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, the problem is <laughs> everywhere. No, does anyone have any more questions? Okay, so thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.